In this episode, a look back at the Engels Pedroza Eric the Prince Martin bout from 1988. This is more of a personal upload as Eric the Prince Martin was my stablemate back in 1987 and 88 when I trained at Pittman's Gym in Oakland, California. We had the same trainer in Jimmy Simmons and I had the opportunity to spar with Prince before this bout as well as accompany him to a gym in San Jose where he sparred with a lightweight contender at the time named David Gonzalez who some of you may remember as challenging Terry Norris at junior middleweight. Now for this fight, Prince was brought in as a, an opponent for Engels Pedroza, a knockout artist from Venezuela who was concussing everyone put in front of him and had a record of 22 and, and 1, all 22 by knockout. Uh, but he had just been stopped by a journeyman named Mike Johnson, so he didn't come into this fight with an aura of uh, invincibility. Meanwhile, Prince had a record of 21 wins, 11 losses, and 3 draws. He had fought some notables in the division, such as Buddy McGurch, John Montez, Cubanino Perez, uh, Padrizio Oliva, Brian Baronet, and he held uh, Lupi Aquino to a draw early in his career. Uh, he was a great defensive fighter and extremely difficult to hit in the gym. In the gym, he, he resembled like a, a Marlon Starling type fighter. I just couldn't, uh, it just couldn't translate into the live, the real fight. But in the gym, he was, he was hell to fight in the gym. You just couldn't hit the guy. So, without further ado, I give you Pedroza versus Prince from 1988. Back to Bally's Humile ringside with Ray Boom Boom Mancini and Mort Charnik. Young fighters on the rise is the theme here, and the man in the ring, ready to take on Eric Martin, is a man on the rise, a meteoric rise, I might add. Engels Pedroza, 22 wins, all by knockout. His average fight lasts 1.5 rounds. Let's head up to Chuck for the introduction of our main event. Ladies and gentlemen, the officials assigned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission for the next bout of the evening, the judges are Dalby Shirley, Art Lurie, and Jerry Roth. Your referee is Carlos Padilla. The next bout of the evening, ladies and gentlemen, the main event of the night. Ten rounds of boxing in the junior welterweight division. Introducing, in the red corner, formerly of Venezuela, now fighting out of Long Beach, California, weighing in at 144 pounds, with a professional record of 22 wins, one defeat with 22 KOs. He's rated number seven in the world by the WBA. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the heart-punching Ingalls Pedrosa. And in the blue corner, formerly of Chicago, Illinois, now fighting out of San Francisco, California. He weighed in at 145 pounds. His professional record consists of 21 wins, 11 defeats, two draws with seven KOs. Here is the Prince, Eric Martin. Okay, Martin Pedroza, you were already given instructions earlier in your dressing room. I hope you will abide that uh, instructions, okay? Any question? Check it out, fighting. 
To the tail of the tape we go. They almost match up identically, except for the reach. Eric Martin will have a four-inch reach advantage. He also has a lot more experience. Has been in with three former world champions. Martin's been in with the best. We'll see what he can do with Eric, uh, Angles Pedro tonight, right? Because as you mentioned at the top of the show, it could be going to school time for Angles Pedroza. Absolutely. Pedroza is a terrific starter. He'll come out, he'll try to get things going right away. His last fight was back in early October. He took out Othel Chuchu Dixon in the first round of the Strohs tournament at the Forum. Uh, Dixon didn't know what hit him. Uh, it was unbelievable because Othel Chuchu Dixon, a very solid opponent. And right now, Pedroza looking to capture the junior welterweight tournament over there at the Forum. Well, you see when Pedroza and Martin came, Martin came out and tried to touch gloves with Pedroza. Pedroza, a very sportsmanlike, touched it. But I tell you what, that's not very smart for a guy like Martin. A guy like Pedroza is going to uh, maybe do it once, but next time, second punch you with a right hand. And that's the, it's an early evening then. But he isn't that kind of kid. He's a kid that has brings no animus into the round, into the ring. He just Eric, wants to entertain and win, that's all. Eric the Prince Martin last fought on June 4th, losing a 10-round decision to Cubanito Perez, a, a fight far tougher for Cubanito than he thought. Martin has taken some good shots with, him, with the likes of James Buddy McGirt, Lupe Aquino, Patrizio Oliva, and some excellent, excellent fighters, and he's never been stopped, Fight never been stopped in 34 fights. So Pedroza, his punching power, will certainly get a test tonight. Hugh, he belongs to that clan of fighters who fights every in their hometown and does well loses close split decisions which tells you that he, despite the fact he's had 11 losses those losses may have been partisan losses you know? first of all uh, you can see the, uh, Eric Martin when he, his defense and yet he's another one who leans back with his body he's pretty shifty he leans back just enough to get out of the way to punches uh, but he, his hands are low and that's dangerous now he can punch so he's gonna have to get his hands up a little bit higher but he's got good reflexes so I'm sure that's what he's depending on. You know, I've seen Pedroza fight half dozen times. I've never seen him quite this tentative to start a fight. He usually comes out wailing right from the get-go, but he's certainly shown Martin some respect. And right now, he looks like he's uh, doing more boxing than he has in many previous fights. I think he's aware that he's in with a KG veteran, and he wants to show that he can box and also has some, some ring generalship, some command. And also, he probably recognizes that this fight may well go the distance, and he wants to be ready for it. He doesn't need it to Mike Johnson back on June 17th. He was way ahead on everybody's scorecard here. Mike Johnson had a cronk and literally ran out of gas in the ninth round, hitting the deck three times, and the fight was stopped. 30 seconds to go here in round number one. Engels Pedroza in the black trunk came in in kind of a wild outfit. We're not real sure. Uh, Ray, you kind of think he looks a little bit like a uh, good friend of yours, Hector Macho, Macho how he gets Please. the crowd. One of them guys is enough. <laughs> Please, it's hard to swallow. <laughs> Ray, Ray, you're going to have to tell us about about your plans. This is. We will come back with Ray's plans and more boxing from Bally's after this. <laughs> round number two, and oh. as you were saying before, we were I... so rudely interrupted by the end of the round. Ray might have a few plans. Uh, the... Right. I want to know what those plans are. You've got big things. Is it a return to the ring against Hector Camacho? Give, give us an exclusive right Wait. here. Ray. Quick. Well, right now it looks like it's going to happen early next year. Um, that's the, you know, as much as people have screwed it up before, let's hope they don't screw this one up. But if they don't, yeah, the fight's going to happen early next year. So you may be previewing Pedroza for a future title fight. Who knows? Who knows? Uh -huh. guys, uh, you're not here only here as a commentator. You're here as a scout too, Ray. I don't know if that's fair. I can only I, do one I, job I like at a time. Who knows? Who, only the shadow knows. No. <laughs> the man of mystery, Ray. Mystery man, Mancini. Pedroza and Martin will continue to fight while we have uh, our little discussion here at ringside. Eric the Prince Martin coming in with a record of 22 and 11, and in two short years, actually it was today as the 22nd, it was two years and five days ago that Mr. Pedroza began his professional career. KO one of Gordon Han up in Bismarck, North Dakota. I don't know why he would begin his career up there. I know that Virgil Hill likes to fight up there, but uh, that's about all. You two things I have to say. One of them is Eric Prince Martin. You, you, know, you mentioned the, the uh, world, former world title holders, title holders he fought. 
Betty McGurley was 140. Lupe, Lupe Aquino was 154, junior middleweight. Yeah. He's fought a wide range yeah. of champions. Uh, so obviously his weight can fluctuate. He can fight anywhere from junior middleweight to ju junior middleweight. But he's fought guys who are good punchers, good boxers. So you know he's a solid opponent. The other thing about Pedroza, everyone, now, here's the only thing. Everyone talking about him being the greatest thing in the boxing game now since, uh, you know, since Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. But here's the only problem I have. Well, he lost his one fight, and everyone keeps overstepping. He lost to Mike Johnson on a knockout. He didn't lose a decision. He got knocked out. So whether it's his gas or his chin or whatever, right. I mean, he, you know, yeah. Right, he but, ran out of gas. He, okay. he wasn't really stopped. He stopped himself. I mean, he was just but if they get beat, exhausted. So, well, what I'm saying is, whenever you talk about a guy like that, you got to talk about how he gets yeah. beat. So that, that's my, you know, I'm a little bit skeptical of anybody that try to make out to be the next Superman. If he's lost the fight, how did he lose it? So, well, you're absolutely right, Ray. And only he in history will prove right, whether exactly. he's a great fighter or even a good fighter. That's exactly my point. And Eric Martin tonight may be the type of guy who can uh, do the same type of thing, extend him for, for uh, a good many rounds and then start the... You're absolutely going. right, Ray. That's the strategy. Take him into the, the late rounds and then turn it off. As you mentioned, Ray, he's been in with the best, McGurk, the Kino, and the wide range of weight classes he's fought in. And right now, I think Pedroza is a little confused. He's hitting with some good shots, and Martin's still there. And he covers up well. So Pedroza heads back to his corner. Coming up this Thursday, October 27, beginning at 8.30, Eastern Score presents a live doubleheader of boxing that originates from the Felt Forum in New York City. Michael Dokes, Edward Rosario, and Alex Stewart on that card, beginning at 8.30 Eastern. The action continues on Thursday from Sacramento at 10 p.m. Eastern, when Tony Lopez puts his IBF junior lightweight belt on the line against John John Molina. Doubleheader on score Thursday night. I'll be at ringside with Sonny Means in Sacramento on Thursday night. Of course, Tony Lopez. Lopez making his first defense since defeating Rocky Lockridge back this summer. So Donnie Lalonde is in the crowd tonight. Of course, he's got about two weeks before he's got to lace him up and go against Sugar Ray Leonard for uh, two world titles, the two for one sale the WBC's holding in a couple weeks. And of course, also in the crowd tonight is Michael Spinks and promoter Butch Lewis. So we've uh, they've been walking around. So a star-studded night here in round number three. And Engels Pedroza doesn't like to fight this deep into the fight. Well, I'll tell you what, Hugh. Engels Pedroza is having trouble with Eric Martin. He is smooth and sharp, and he doesn't do a lot of running. But he moves his body in the place. There's the bear. He is right on the chin. Uh, right on the chin. Right on the chin. Oh. Right on. A quick right hand. And Martin goes Seven. down. And now we can watch Seven. Pedroza go to work. Eight. Because this is when he's at his best. Jimmy, Jimmy Montoya just gave him the thumbs up sign. I think he wants him to. Mark looks a little wobbly. The eyes aren't there. Still not there. You're right. You. Still, his hands got to give you up. He's got to get. Oh! But he landed a, a yeah. kind of a lunging left there. Right. Now Pedroza will try to finish his night work. His night's work right here. This is where Mark's got to use all his boxing skills and all the tricks he knows. Tie him up, spin him, See, stay out of his way. He let stick that left hand out. He knows Pedroza came in and he. And he threw his own short left hook and caught Pedroza. A good combination sends Martin back to the ropes. He's still on wobbly legs. Pedroza, a very, very good finisher. He's got Martin in trouble against ropes. Now you get the idea oh. Martin's waiting for him. Wait a second. We oh. see Pedroza had his monk beast knocked out. This is still a fight. What a fight. Look at those two guys. Pedroza's trying to hammer Martin into the floor. Martin's staying on the ropes on purpose now. He's waiting for the guy to come in because he knows he opens up. And he's trying to catch him with something short and sharp. And he did. He knocked that, the bomb piece out of Pedroza's mouth. He's keeping his hands up. Martin looks Slides like he's uh, hurting here, obviously, here in the third round. And Pedroza wants to close the night's work. But Mark continues to fight well off the ropes. Pedroza, see, he likes to measure everybody. Right, he's, 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 but see, here's what a case where he's got, he's picking his shots fine, but he, he's got a guy with it. he doesn't do the simple moves. Step to the side, dig to the body, take him Absolutely up through the middle. He's, right. throwing, he's hitting gloves. He's throwing, he's right in front of the guy. So if Martin should throw something back, he's gonna hit him. Step to the side, dig to the body, him. and bring it, and bring, on it. it and bring it up through the middle. We still You're got absolutely that. right. The classic maneuver of stepping over the side and shooting a body shot right behind the elbows. And then go, opening the man up. 
Pedroza has Martin back on his heels the entire third round here, really loading up, and now Mark trying to fight off the ropes. Mark doing a nice job, but Pedroza trying to get inside. It, this may sound cr crazy to you, but I think after this round, though Pedroza won round handily, it may be a better round for Martin because Pedroza is uh, expending himself. He's throwing a lot of punches. He had the guy hurt, but Martin is an old crafty veteran. He used all the tricks. He got out of trouble, and he's throwing some good body shots. He's throwing some good short hooks. And Pedroza is now, his arms are starting to get a little tired. We'll come back with round number four of this 10 rounder after this. Stay tuned. <laughs> look at the knockdown there in round number three and it was a quick right from angles pedroza coming up he tries to go down low and then comes up a right hand right on the button and martin got up and more importantly ray as you mentioned survived the round and pedroza really threw it just a ton of punches there and you at the end of the round pedroza was sucking up a lot of air his mouth was wide open well he spit his he either spit his mouthpiece out or had it knocked out Martin has never been stopped in 34 fights, and we already reviewed the lineup he's fought, so he's fought some tremendous competition. Dio Calame and he went back-to-back -back on the ESPN welterweight tournament about three years ago and uh, had some tremendous wars there, but Martin's been in with the best, and right now Pedroza getting a pretty good test. Well, see, you, you uh, Mort, also, you said at the beginning of the round, you're saying he's a very sportsmanlike guy. He sure is. Did you see how he stuck out his glove and tried to sucker him with the right hand, but it wasn't there? Yeah. Well, you learned about that with Arguello, didn't you? I never stuck out my hand. <laughs> no. Uh-uh, that bell rings, we're going to war. But that's when you learn that you had to go to war and, and put the punches together and, and keep up the, the pressure. Angles Pedroza continues to try to put away Eric Martin to no avail right now. He's certainly landing the more telling shots, but uh, he's got to kind of scratch his head a little bit and say, this guy's got great heart and serves him a great chin. Well, he also knows how to fight, too. And the other thing about him is he's not using his left hand properly. He ought to stick out that left hand and wing it around and keep him out, keep him right out in the center of the ring. And he isn't doing that. He lets uh, Pedroza pull him around. This is only the third time that Pedroza's been by the third round. So, uh, new category. Big left hook and Mark probably again. Yeah, he's hurt. But he's surprised. He's got, he's, got, he's got good legs underneath him. And he's also about to be a daddy. His wife, at this very moment, Sandy, may be giving birth to their child. The child is now a couple of days overdue, as a matter of fact. Coming in from the Bay Area to take on Engels Pedroza is Eric Martin and continues to get hit with some monstrous shots, but comes back. Well, again, it's all, Pedroza is a headhunter, and he should learn to move the punches around. Hook to the body and hook to the chin. Throw combinations and come back with the right hand. Three punch combination. Come back with the left hook. Jab stuck out there by Martin after a nice left hook landed by Pedroza. Pedroza once again getting a little fatigued here at the end of round number four. And he's doing, he's doing the same thing that you pointed out before. He stands right in front of Martin and head hugs. Instead of taking the step over to the side and up, throwing the up, punch right below the elbow. Another odd habit that he has, Ray, I don't know if you saw that, he puts his hands down around his waist sometimes after he throws a combination. Well, so, a good fighter is going to catch him, going to step right back in and, and catch him with a good right hand. Round number four, Martin still standing right there, and uh, kind of, I guess he stepped on his foot and threw Pedroza down, or pushed him back anyway. Pedroza oh. knows now that he's in a tough, tough fight, and I don't think he's going to look for a knockout. Round number four is in the book. Boxing action continues here on FNN Score. A doozy here. The winner getting a shot at Mike Tyson. Tyrell Biggs will take on the Italian champion, Francesco Damiani, in a rematch of the 1984 gold medal bout held in Los Angeles. Of course, Biggs got it there. Damiani wants revenge, and the winner gets Mike Tyson if there's a consolation prize. I was just going to say, it's supposed to be some consolation. That ain't no bargain for either one. <laughs> That, that, of course, is coming your way next Saturday at 2 o'clock Pacific, 5 Eastern. Here's replay. A you, you're right here. I'm sorry. Right here, you see good right left by Pedroza. They started to put them combinations together. And more pointed out, Eric Barr's got some He's got a nice pair of legs underneath him because he's got shot and he stays up. Oh, 
But you know what, Ray? Check us out. They aren't true combination. There's too much of a pause between the punches. I agree. I agree. He shouldn't be loading up. He ought to be looking just to keep the punches, keep him busy, keep Martin busy. You don't have to, to power every punch. Is that true, Ray? I agree, Mort. You know, you just let the punches flow. And if the guy, it's timing. Punching is timing. If the guy's coming in, you throw a shot that's just a good straight shot from the shoulder, no, no, really no power behind it, and the guy runs into it, he's going to go. Ray, let's say, hypothetically speaking, you would fight him in two months. What would you do in the ring against Angel Petrosa? Petrosa? Yeah. First of all, guy like Petrosa, I have to stick with my style. And pressure is my style. And I just have to stay on top of him, try to smother his big right hand. In the meantime, go to work underneath and on over the top. Uh, stay behind the jab, work my way in, and just try to roll underneath his punches and bang to that body and then come up to the head. But you have to stay close to him. I can't give him yeah. any range to punch. Yeah, well, that's where his power is. The other thing that Pedrosa is doing more of this route, which is smart, he's going to the body. And the initial left hook to the body early in the round, and Martin reacted to it, and he ought to go stick with it. Round number five, and Eric Martin holding true to form, never has been stopped in 34 professional fights. A lot of people thought about the second round, Mr. Martin was going to be taking a, an early night of it, but he's still right in front of Angles Pedroza. 22 wins by KO, and still there. You know, he, he looks kind of like a kind of a, a lazy fighter. He's just kind of there. He does, you know, he's not real busy. Very unorthodox. Yeah, it's just really hard to figure out. Yes, exactly. That's what makes him, you know, all those fights he had, you never know, because he's a good-looking guy. You don't think he took a lot of beating because he knows how to protect himself. He knows the, how to move his body in and out, and smother the guy, keep close. He knows all the tricks. He leads away, pulls away from the punches. That's why it would be wise for Angles to throw a jab to the chest and follow up with some combination. Stop him in place. Shot. That shot, I felt that one. And he's still up. <laughs> now he's just now trying to load up here. Yeah, Joe's don't know what to do because the guy's standing in front of the weight from the punch. Well, there's no question about Angle's punching power, but right now, how he finishes, and uh, you think tactically that uh, he's got some weaknesses, things like that, right? A little bit, but that all, hey, that all be worked out. You know, you just, when you're fighting a guy and you're hitting him with everything, you just keep sticking with what you know, and eventually you feel he'll fall. And Eric Martin doesn't give you many opportunities. He doesn't open up, he doesn't offer a heck of a lot. He's there to counter you. He's waiting for that right hand. He's waiting for that right hand. See, he steps right inside of it. Mm -hmm. It's a smart, smart fighter. Just there. Round five is in the books. We'll come back with round number six. Pedroza and Martin from Bally's after this. We're gonna. He's almost out on his feet. I think that that last shot at the end of round number five might have done as much damage as any shot during the course of the evening. Here comes a replay more called for, and we got that we all heard you. <laughs> The big, the big right hand. I have hand. no secrets. I, I have no secrets. Oh, you heard that? <laughs> big right hand by Pedroza and Martin still there. We go to round number six, and the last time Pedroza went this far was in his fight with Mike Johnson back on June 17th, and fatigue became more of a factor than anything else. And, and he see, looks like he's hurt right now. Exactly. I was just gonna say he ain't bouncing off that stool. <laughs> he come to center ring, and uh, he took the step back. Yeah, but Martin also looked like he's wondering, is it worth? It, you know. Yeah, hey, but he does this all the time, though. Yeah. He did this with Cubinito Perez back in June. He, they had to push him off the stool to get him out in the ring, and he was there for 10 rounds. Mm -hmm. Perez, not the, the puncher that Pedroza is, but certainly the accomplished boxer. Yeah. Pedroza working hard, trying to load up. And Barton landed a couple nice chopping right hands. You know, Pedroza is a two-time world champion and a silver medalist. The, the, his one loss was in, uh, I think it was in 86, to the Cuban, Adolfo Orta, who was a fine, fine fighter. And he had Orta down twice. But here's a guy that, you know, he has the logic of generals. That's the heavy artillery. And he's got to learn that it isn't always the heavy punches that are going to win for him, that he's got to put punches together and develop some kind of tactical approach. 
Yeah. Well, I tell you, I got some new words from my vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> round number six, Pedroza and Eric Martin going at it. And okay. Martin's starting to lead with his head a little more here in round number six. But he had that look in the first round like he was about out on his feet. And here in round number six, it looks like he's... Well, he's shaking his head. head. He's a very modest guy. He said he didn't have any kind of a right hand at all. And his manager, Ed Barberi, said, stop it. Just cut it out. Yeah, he said... a good right hand. He goes, uh, he goes, I don't hit real hard, but I do throw a lot of punches. He might have uh, an image problem. And right now, Pedroza is giving him more than an image problem. Now, I don't think he has any image problems. I think he knows who he is and what he is, and he takes pride in being an accomplished fighter, wishes that he could be moved a little better. Uh, here's a guy who would like to fight in his own hometown for a change and, and have the luxury of, of two months' notice. Well, well, I heard, I heard a motion that more you put a petition together up there wherever in the barrier, and let's have him fight in his hometown. And he's going to fight you, right? And, and your great comeback, right? Yeah. Great, yeah. And it, <laughs> what come back? I'm here, Mort. Oh, okay. Great. <laughs> scouting angles, Madroza, we I, might add. Yeah, but scouting angles, Madroza. I, I thought we'd line up a schedule for you. Yeah. One a month. <laughs> or one seconds. every other week. 30 seconds As to go. As a matter of fact, six. Eric Martin's corner man and assistant trainer, Jim Simmons, fought three fights on the same night in 1946 at different arenas in San Francisco. Beat that, Ray. Uh, <laughs> and he trailed by cable car, which was kind of scary. That'll do it for round number six. We'll come back with round number seven. Boxing from Valleys continues after this. To fight of attrition. Fight of nutrition. Attrition. Oh, attrition. Okay, what? Ray wants to go out to dinner. Pedroza and Martin in round number seven, and Pedroza might have landed one a little on the uh, yeah. south side. Point away. Point away. Padilla is taking a point away, not saying it's going to make too much difference when they go to the scorecard, okay. unless Eric Martin rallies tremendously here. There are a lot What's of a uh, celebrities in the crowd tonight. Jerry Cooney is here with Chuck Norris. Everybody's Jack, taking Jerry, a look. Jerry Quarry. Quarry? Not Cooney. Co 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 get it right, you! Oh, you told me Cooney. I didn't say I said Chuck Norris. Okay, the fight's at hand. You're going to negotiate with Cooney, okay. Martin and Pedroza going out here in round number seven. And on the scorecard, it has to be heavily in Pedroza's favor. He's rocked Martin on a number of occasions just like that. But uh, Eric the Prince continues to stand right there. Oh, and he's getting hit with some shots, Pedroza. And he's landing some as well. If, if, oh, what a good game guy, tough, determined. Yeah, if, if Eric Martin can get one of those left hooks, uh, Put some little bit of power behind it because uh, Angles Pedroza opens wide, you uh, know, drops that right in, opens uh, right open, uh, right up for that left hook. And if Martin get any, any power behind it, he's going to take this kid down. And the other thing he does, he sticks his chin up in the air, right? Hangs his chin. Not a smart move. Not a smart move and open for a swift counter. That's for sure. Maybe IBF uh, welterweight champ Meldrick Taylor could give him a quick lesson and uh, something like that. I'm sure a lot of uh, junior welterweights would right now have a pretty uh, good day against Angles Pedroza. Hey, Roger Mayweather's in the audience watching this fight. You can believe me, he's watching with uh, acute oh, awareness. Oh! oh. Another, another low blow. Padilla has already I subtracted a point earlier in the round. Maybe we can get a replay after his run. The board will call for it. Because Eric Martin's hurt. He's hurt. He's tired. He's sore. And he's hurt. And numb shots are taking a lot out of him. So he's wisely looking to take a breather. Why not? Well, of course, because he's hurt, Mark. Right. But afterwards, maybe we can see if, how low that was. Padilla giving to Martin all the time he needs to recoup from the low blow. Actually, the second this round, the first one was deducted, a uh, point was deducted. He looks like he's getting his legs back, very important. Padilla about ready to resume the action here in round number seven. A nice breather for Eric Martin. Well, he's a canning veteran, and that's what he was looking to do, is to grab a breather. A couple of seconds, and he got it. 
certainly it doesn't look like he's been hurt, Ray. Do, do you think so? Oh, he's coming back. You know he's has to come back home. And Petros is not in the sense yet. Let's do it. Martin Petros loves nice counter shots. He loves this type of fight, Petros. He, he, he wants this type of fight. I think he wants to prove people that he can go 10 rounds and go 10 rounds full tilt. He got a sneaking suspicion that Eric Marcus is going to be standing there at the end of 10 rounds. The other thing that, that uh, Engels Pedroza doesn't do, he doesn't come back with the hook after throwing the left right. So he's not in position to oh. Round number seven in the books, and Eric Martin kind of gets a little confused and starts heading back to Pedroza's corner, maybe to get some advice over there. Whatever. <laughs> Gentlemen, Pedro's way ahead on the scorecards. Uh, you know, Martin doesn't appear to have the punch. He he really hasn't gotten Pedro's respect as we get a shot at the former light heavyweight and heavyweight champion, Michael Spinks, here with his promoter, business manager, Butch Lewis. Michael Spinks going into acting like the man to my right, Ray Mancini, who's certainly had your shot in the acting no. field. Well, I was had my shot. I've done a few things. I haven't had my shot yet, because when I hit to take my shot, I'm taking the title. It's Broadway Ray, right? <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to be a song and dance man, Ray? I'm going to be a hooper like Jimmy Cagney. <laughs> uh, I, uh, yeah, right now, in the, between the corner, in the between rounds, I'm looking in the corner. Pedroza is very, a very spent fighter. But Jimmy Montoya, who is a great motivator, is telling him, hey, three rounds away, and, you need, and you're getting great work. It's, it'll be a great win for you. So he's, you know, motivating Pedroza to come out and finish strong. There's a right hand. It lands right flush on the chin again, and Martin, with and the, his good balance, is still there. And the right hand, uh, Hugh had good extension on it, and you would have liked to have seen Engels follow it with uh, mm -hmm. either another uh, right hand or a left hand, put some combinations together. Four or five punch combinations as opposed to one or two yeah. punch combinations. Boy, does, does Pedroza look weary in that situation. He was completely squared away in front of uh, Martin. The crowd certainly not used to seeing Pedroza go this deep into the fight. Usually they come here for a quick knockout by Engels, but Eric Martin, true to form, still right there. Figures he's been hit by men as good and probably better, and just as hard. Buddy McGirt, Lupi Aquino, just a few of the names he's been in with. Has gone the distance with all of them. And with Elise Cubanito Perez more, more recently. Why not have Cubanito Pedroza fight? I mean, that they, would they, be for that to see. Mel Grev has talked about that. Uh, that would be a, a very good fight. Of course, uh, well, I don't want to give away any secrets, but Benner is working on it as a matter of fact. Oh, great. I'm glad to see it. I'd pay to see it more. Now, Martin just got clipped with the left hook and he staggered back. This, he's a very tired and hurt fighter. Midway through round eight, Pedros are looking to, to end it here, but many times already, Martin has been stung and actually down and has wow. still rallied to maintain his feet. And now Pedros just looks like he's loaded. This one, Pedros just loves it. He's like he's loaded up, and Martin is definitely very, very hurt. He's fighting back. He's fighting back, and he caught Pedroza with a right hand. That's where Pedroza ran in. Pedroza has a contuse and bruise. Contuse, that's another word I'm using. Oh, no, look. Put that in your board. I'm looking that up when I get off the air tonight. Okay, okay well, right well, look underneath the <laughs> cheekbone, the right cheekbone of Engels Pedroza. Yeah, it's, it's, it's swelling up. He's got a, a nice little contuse there. <laughs> and he just got cuffed. <laughs> But Martin, after getting rocked about four or five times early here in round number eight, now looks okay, like he's on steady legs again. But if you look at the length of, of Martin's reach, you just wonder what, what he might do if he stuck a nice stiff jab out and right. kept it out right. in Pedroza's face. Right, he just, he just right now broke up, broke up uh, Pedroza's attack for a moment. But it's a, it's a jab here and there, and more. you're right. Yeah. He, Pedroza toward the end of round number eight here, running a little out of gas. We'll come back with round number nine of this 10-rounder after this. Oh! Oh! Round 
number nine has not been kind to Angles Pedroza. The last time he was in this round was back on June 17th, and he literally ran out of gas and got stopped after being knocked down three times by Kronk's Michael Johnson, his first and only loss. He's now recovered for three straight wins, and Eric Martin, after taking a pretty good beating through eight rounds, is still there. And you have a feeling, gentlemen, that he's going to be there at the end of round number 10. He just has, he's got one of those uh, chins and hearts that just won't let him quit. Oh, the guy just caught Pedroza with two good punches after Pedroza was trying to be cute. <laughs> Pedroza trying to juice it up here, showing people that, yes, I can go 10, and I can go in at full tilt. The question about him has been his endurance. Well, you can see he's got good legs left underneath him. Hugh, uh, a good bounce to it. But he's in with a tough guy, and he's, he's got to learn another fashion of, of winning a prize fight. Good shot. Good Mark shot. landing some nice counter shots here They're in round counter. number nine. They are, but they aren't real strong punches. They're arm punches. So Pedroza acknowledged this, that last shot. Dropping those hands again. Good, another good shot. Catch him with the teeth. Mm -hmm. That's not ground. Maybe a downer. No, he, he's wobbling. Yes, right. he is. Yes, he is. Just that ground. Could be his downfall. Be his Waterloo. With Merrick to Prince Mark to come back with two or three more good shots. Well, he's reaching. That's one thing that he's reaching. Angles Another low blow by Pedroza. You got to grab Martin and walk him around, Ray. Grab some time and, and some, some win. Oh. Right hand by Pedroza and wobbly legs again for Mark, but he's still there. We still have to vote on the fight of the night. Uh, the fight could be the fight of the night. Right. Well, we, we haven't seen the whole card yet. That's for sure. But you know, we need a hats off salute to, to matchmaker Mel Fred. What terrific cards he's put together. Absolutely. Absolutely. He certainly has. Round number nine, and Martin is now trying to go on the attack. He looked like a tired man from the time he walked out of the, out of the locker room, but he's still there. Okay, 30 okay. seconds to go in round number nine. Pedroza trying to show that the legs are still there and combinations are still flowing pretty decently. 17 seconds to go. Good shots. Good shots by Pedroza, and Martin comes back with a nice counter right himself. It's Martin to go home <laughs> and see his wife. <laughs> Pedroza, arm weary here in round number nine. So, gentlemen, the scorecard's got to be heavily in favor of Angles Pedroza, and Eric Martin doesn't appear to have the punching power necessary to, to score a knockout. So, I guess Angles would. He, does he dance for the next three minutes, or what's he going to do? No, he, he's a warrior. He's going to come out and punch for three minutes. So, Ray, that was very perceptive. He is a warrior, even without his headband and the feathers. There is Chuck Norris. Next to him is probably Jerry Quarry, and not Jerry Cooney. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be happy to hear that. <laughs> also this one. Put something in this one. And which Lewis and next Jerry day. Quarry was a pretty fair warrior in his hey, day. He could have been world champion any other time, maybe. But he come out. He was a tremendous fighter at a lot at a time of a lot of tremendous fighters. Well, two in particular. That's for sure. Joe Fraser and Muhammad Ali. Round number 10 is about set to begin. You're looking at Angles Pedroza looking now for his 23rd win as a professional. But would it be his first decision win should this go the distance? All his previous 22 fights have gone by way of KO, all within the fifth round. But I should answer a question, you. I'm sure he wants to go out with another KO on his record. He don't want to go out with no decision. So he'll come out bomb bombing him, bombing away. Martin has to figure if I lasted nine rounds with this kid, I can go down to three minutes. He hopes. Look at that good canny veteran. Martin blocked those punches. Still sticking that jab out there, but he's never doubled up on that jab. It's always been like a 
a one-shot deal with Martin, but it often gets in. You see the way uh, Eric Martin holds his feet, he stands sideways. That is a defensive position. In other words, you are gonna hit, you may hit me, but I ain't you're gonna hit me with nothing solid because I'm gonna bend, I'm gonna be able to hold my stance. That's a defensive position. So you could see that he just wants... There's a big left hook. He lands it right on the chin of Eric the Prince Martin, and Martin Five. looks uh, kind of upset. He, uh, the eyes certainly aren't there. He's got about another minute and a half to hold on. He looks, he looks like he's upset. He's a little, little bit upset that he just got caught. Well, then he, he left himself open. Smart old guy like that. Pedroza trying to finish up shop here in round number 10, showing he's still in tremendous condition. He doesn't look too hurt at this point. He just looks like he's very mad at himself. Like you said, more opened himself up. Second round, Martin went down and lasted that. And right now, he's trying to withstand the onslaught right now by Engels Pedroza. See, he steps inside that right. hand when he's that close. Very, very smart. Yes, he is. He slides along the ropes. Yes, yes. Pedroza would love nothing more than to continue his knockout streak, but right now, certainly, it has to be in jeopardy, and the low blows continue. Right. But I don't think they're intentional. I, one thing about Pedroza, he looks like a very decent sportsman-like kid. They're all decent. Like Ray they Mancini. Oh, oh, don't, said, don't bring Ray into this. Please, please, Mike. Uh, that's, that's right. Ray, uh, no gentleman Mancini. <laughs> Tell you what, this Pedroza, I'm, I'm sure his people glad he's got the work under his belt. He's, he's coming out, he's strong this round. That's very impressive work by Pedroza from an endurance standpoint. And as we mentioned and more mentioned, the fact that he had been this distance successfully. Uh, the last time he went this route, he ran out of gas in round number nine. Oh, he got tagged again coming in. He's got to do something about keeping his hands up. Oh, he runs in there, chin hanging out. Like a lantern in a windstorm, Ray. How about that? I like that, boy. Oh! So the 10-rounder is history. Eric Martin is the first man to go the distance with the knockout artist, Engels Pedroza. And they both uh, do the arm embrace at center ring. Bow to the crowd. The crowd's going to be very happy about that. And we'll come back with the decision. Engels Pedroza and Eric Martin will be back with the decision from Bally's here in Las Vegas after this timeout. We have a unanimous decision. Judge Jerry Ross scores the bout 96-90. Judge Dalby Shirley scores 96-89. And Judge Art Lurie scores 96-91. For the winner by unanimous decision, Ingalls Pedrosa. Angles Pedroza getting the 10-round decision. Certainly no surprise here, getting his 23rd professional win, but his first win not by KO. 